What's up, everybody? Today in the U.S. Constitution Explained series, we are talking about the Sixth Amendment to the United States Constitution, which deals with the rights of the accused as it relates to open trial. Now, the Sixth Amendment codified a system here in the United States that was much different than what had existed over in Europe as it relates to trials and accusations of crimes. Basically, in Europe, what happened is you would have magistrates that would investigate the crimes, and then they would then take that evidence to judges, and the judges themselves took the lead in presenting and framing these issues in court, and judges themselves would often question the witnesses. Here in the United States, what we are going to have is a system where each side, the defense and the prosecution, frame their evidence themselves, and they, in turn, question the witnesses. So before we go any further, let's read the text itself of the Sixth Amendment and talk about what it means. All right, so the Sixth Amendment to the United States Constitution. In all criminal prosecutions, the accused shall enjoy the right to a speedy and public trial by an impartial jury of the state and district wherein the crime shall have been committed, which district shall have been previously ascertained by law, and to be informed of the nature and cause of the accusation, to be confronted with the witnesses against him, to have compulsory process for obtaining witnesses in his favor, and to have the assistance of counsel for his defense. Okay, so essentially what we heard there is five core principles of the Sixth Amendment, the right to a speedy and public trial, the right to an impartial jury, the right to be informed of the charges, the right to confront and call witnesses, and the right to an attorney. So what does all of that mean? Well, the right to the speedy and public trial was put in so that you didn't have a situation where there was needless delays, where the you know, authorities were purposely keeping people in prison for no reason at all. And so there have been some criteria that has come forth over the years as far as basically it's a four-part test to determine whether the right to a speedy trial has been violated or not. They look at the length of the delay, the reason for the delay, whether the defendant has asserted the right and the prejudice to the defendant because of the delay. Okay, the amendment also details the right for a public trial. Well, they didn't want to have people having secret trials. They wanted the public to be aware of what was happening. Public trials are to guarantee that people are following the law, that there is due process. Their right to an impartial jury, uh, you're... You have the right to the jury if the punishment is more than six months in prison. So it's only for serious offenses. And of course, the idea of having an impartial jury can be debatable because this is what allows both sides to question the jurors to make sure that they are impartial. Sometimes they will move a trial away from where the crime happened because it is not possible to obtain an impartial jury. The right to an impartial jury is interesting because typically this deals with serious crimes where the punishment is more than six months in jail. Then you have the right to that impartial jury. In some states, they will actually give you a jury for anything, but typically it is when the punishment is six months or more in prison. The notice of accusation is in the Sixth Amendment. That says that the person is entitled to hear the charge that has been filed against them. Obviously, that seems like, of course, that would be the case. However, if you think about it, if this is not guaranteed by law, someone could be locked up and have no idea what they're in jail for and potentially locked up for years. So you want to know why you are being imprisoned so that you can defend yourself. The right of confrontation and the right to call witnesses, basically what this means is the defendant has the ability to confront and to cross-examine witnesses in court so that their testimony is taken at what they say under oath and it's not based on hearsay. Also, the ability to call witnesses, which can lead to subpoenas being filed. If someone believes that a witness will not show up, they can ask the court to file a subpoena, which means by law that person has to show up to court. The right to an attorney, this is after judicial proceedings have begun. It does not apply to anything that happens before that. 
So if you're held in jail on the crime, you don't have the right to the attorney until the charges are filed and read to you. The Supreme Court has actually ruled that if there is no jail time with your charge, you do not have the right to an attorney, although many states will still make attorneys available for everyone. That being said, if you don't want an attorney, you do have the right to represent yourself in court. So there it is, the different sections of the Sixth Amendment to the United States Constitution. Hope you found this interesting and helpful. If you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. I would greatly appreciate it. We'll see you next time here on Mr. Drosty History.